order, Trustee Stone Cipher will begin the invocation. Lord, thank you for all the voices we hear out there today and for the privilege it is to meet again in person and ease back into what used to be our, our routine. We thank you so much for the privilege that it is to serve here at this institution in any capacity, whether it's as a board member or a, a faculty member, the administrators, our staff, there's so much good work to be done here and there's so much good work that's already been done. We ask that you give us guidance as we go into the future. We ask that you give us humble hearts um, as we make decisions, as we try to decide what's best for our students here and what's best for our community and what's best for those around us. We thank you so much for the opportunities that you've given us. We ask that you help to carry us through the rest of this semester. And it's in your wonderful name we pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We will start today with some recognitions. Is Mr. Wilcoxon in here? So glad you guys are here. <clears throat> Said resolution. Whereas Mr. Robert Wilcoxon began his St. Petersburg College career as a work study student with Veteran Services in 1994, which is when he discovered he enjoyed helping students reach their career and academic goals. And whereas Mr. Wilcoxon became an official college employee in 1997, at first working as a staff assistant for scholarships and student financial assistance on the St. Petersburg Gibbs campus, and later as a student services specialist helping veterans obtain scholarships and other types of financial support. And whereas Mr. Wilcoxon transferred to the district office in 2003 to work as a curriculum support specialist for education and student services. Later, he responded to the need for PeopleSoft specialists and helped develop and implement the program and database. And whereas Mr. Wilcoxon transferred <coughs> back to the St. Petersburg Gibbs campus in 2010 to work as a generalist in the associate provost office. Later, he became a student support specialist and then a student support advisor, working with numerous students while mentoring other college advisors. Many of his colleagues have sought his assistance in matters such as financial aid, veteran services, and PeopleSoft. In 2015, he was promoted to student support advisor at the campus's registration department. Over the course of his career, hundreds of students and numerous faculty and staff have benefited from his knowledge and skills, which he has generously shared. Now therefore be it resolved that the St. Petersburg College Board of Trustees and the college community hereby recognize and appreciate the outstanding contributions to the college by Robert Wilcoxon and extend to him our best wishes for enjoyment throughout the years ahead. Said resolution being adopted and approved by the Board of Trustees, St. Petersburg College this 19th day of October 2021. Robert Wilcoxon.
you like to say a few words? Sure. Yes, let's see. <laughs> Mr. Board person, board, Dr. Williams, family and all the young people out here, I want to thank you for letting me be part of this great organization. This is the second best job I ever had in the world. So I appreciate it and I thank you for the time I spent here and I wish I could stay a little longer. So thank you again. Next, we will have our SPC Spotlights by Dr. Williams. Thank you so much, <coughs> Trustee Kidwell. Lots happened in the last um, 30 days. Um, SPC was awarded $1.7 million in funding from the Community Policing Development Program to be regional de-escalation training providers. Good job to the team responsible for that. We also want to congratulate the faculty who have been participating in the AQ micro-credentials to earn the Effective Online Teaching Practices Certificate. 111 faculty total has taken or signed up for the course. 84 are, of our full-time faculty have participated in 27 adjuncts. We anticipate that 14 will finish by the end of the spring term. Congratulations to our faculty. Um, October 15th, we held the Pearls and Portfolio Symposium for middle school girls. We had 125 girls online for half a day, and they were actively participating, chatting, and um, doing everything that girls do. And I want to thank Women on the Way and those in, who were involved there to start working with our young ladies early. Um, and we have a lot of pictures and things that we could share with the board. Also on, I want to say, August 31st, our full-time faculty voted to join the union, United Faculty of Florida. The vote was 193 um, in favor and 56 against, and we want to thank our faculty for their work and um, look forward to working with you through the union. And that is my report for this semester. Great. We will be moving on to comments now. I will start. Um, I was very proud to represent St. Pete College at the ACCT uh, conference this past week in San Diego. Uh, we we had great representation uh, with Dr. Williams and Rebecca, uh, Trustee Butts, Trustee Gibbons, Trustee Sonecipher. We missed Trustee Cole. Uh, but it was a great time of bonding and camaraderie as well as some great sessions um, and really uh, a really smooth trip. Yep. Um, so uh, I was very uh, excited to represent St. P. College out there and uh, everything went great. Any other comments? Uh, I'll follow up. Chair Kidwell, uh, I agree. We had a great time out in San Diego. I want to thank everyone here for their hard work. As we sit in on sessions and listen to things that other colleges are working on throughout the country, it's always, I think, not necessarily a surprise to me anymore, um, but it's encouraging to know that we're often at the forefront of what's happening out there. Um, the thought process that you all have um, as, a, as a college is often quite far ahead of where a lot of other people are. The theme of this conference was diversity, equity, and inclusion. And I sat in on quite a few sessions um, concerning just that. And I want to thank uh, Dr. Pierre uh, for your work since you've been here. I know you and I had lunch a few weeks ago, and I appreciate you getting me even more up to speed with where we're going and, and what the conversations have been. Um, but in all, our, all the sessions there, all the talks, we are very much looking at 
things, I think, in the right way. And um, I think that we're going to be well served to continue in the direction we're going. So thank you for your work and everyone else who's been involved. Um, and I'll just say, it was another reminder to me, thank you, Dr. Williams. You came to the airport after driving back from Tallahassee the day before, and you're leaving for Tallahassee again today. Mm -hmm. um, it is a lot of work to advocate for this college and this institution, mm -hmm. and the drive to Tallahassee is one thing, but then to back that up with a flight to San Diego and back is quite another. So we have a lot of great people that are serving here and giving of their time, and um, I'm excited about it, and I'm encouraged by it, and thank you. Thank you. I did fail to share, Mr. Chair, if you don't mind, one other sure. um, nugget. Um, this week, um, our collaborative lab will host the Florida Pathways Institute. We'll have 1,200 individuals throughout the state of Florida online virtually. Um, which is a big deal for our collaborative labs to be the group to host them. And we also will be hosting on October 21st, um, Palm Beach State College Rise Professional Development Day. So it's 1,200 employees, 50 breakout sessions um, from Palm Beach. And um, I just want to congratulate the Collaborative Labs for continuing to be creative, innovative, but also accessible. No matter where people are from, we're able to serve them and support. And I'm sorry, I failed to say that at the forefront. Yes, Hi, Chair. Chair Kidwell, I just Trust wanted um, two brief things. One, I'm sorry that I wasn't able to go to San Diego this time. I always enjoy the ACCT conferences. Um, I wanted to uh, congratulate our uh, recruitment team. Um, I was talking to a parent at Largo High School who is thrilled and excited about the November 3rd signing day that's coming up. And so um, we're really excited for that. It was so nice to be in the community and hear the excitement among parents and students and the um, staff at Largo High that they were truly thrilled to have the signing day for St. Petersburg College and um, honor the students who are making uh, that choice to stay in our community and attend SPC. So um, thank you so much for all your hard work to work with the staff there, with the LEAP team, and um, ensure that uh, we are on the forefront of those students. So thanks so much. Good. <clears throat> We will now open uh, the meeting to public speakers. Um, any member of the public that wishes to speak should have provided a, complete, a completed speaker's card to uh, board clerk Rebecca Turner. We do have two cards. Um, so if Robin Bauer Miller would like to come forward and speak, and a reminder, um, we would like to keep uh, comments to three minutes. Thank you. Thank you, BOT members. To teach is to touch a life forever, from one of my favorite authors, Anonymous. <laughs> I am Robin Bauer Miller, the democratically elected leader of the faculty of SPC. And because I was removed from the agenda, I would just like to take a moment to highlight some of the talented and dedicated faculty of SPC. First, I would like to recognize the CEDL Distinguished Faculty Award winners for the last two years. Jim Wallace, Science, for his student coaching. Scott Pelletier, EMT, for innovation in the classroom. Gretchen Gaskin, Math, for innovation in a remote setting. Meg Delicato, College of Education, for civil engagement. Nikki Riggs, Vet Tech, for her ability to pivot in a pandemic. Don Destacio, EMT, for his student coaching. Sue Schumann, Science, for going above and beyond for her students. Heather Chaston, Nursing, for her remote classroom innovation. Chad Marin from the library for his civil engagement. Scott Cooper, award-winning set designer and theater, for his efforts in a remote setting. Please come and see Peter and the Starcatcher, which opens tomorrow night through Sunday. And more recently, Wendy Brown Hewn from Management for her published blog on badging. Lene Boheme, Marine Biology, 
and Aaron Gorgian from Botany for their research submission based on a Titan Achievement Grant. And Julie Adamich, accounting for completing her continuing ed for her CPA license. And Greg Bird, humanities literature, poet, Fulbright Fellow, proud veterans advisor, for his numerous publications, including his poetry book, The Name for the God Who Speaks. And finally, let us pause and remember Don Drew, Math, St. Pete Gibbs, who recently passed away. If you're able, please contribute to the SPC Don Drew African American Male STEM Scholarship Program. This scholarship is sponsored by Dr. Johnny Ruth Clark of the National Council of Black American Affairs. If anyone would like to see the details of those highlighted today, please contact me and I would be happy to send the PowerPoint that details all the fine folks that I mentioned, and there's plenty more that I'd love to mention as well. Bauer, rhymes with power, dot robin, at spc.edu. Thank you, BOT members. Thank you for your comments. <clears throat> Next, we have Darlene Westberg. Is Darlene here? Hello, Board of Trustees and President Williams. I just would like to take a moment to recognize how the faculty have pivoted during this pandemic. I've been teaching online since 2000, 2001, but I saw my fellow faculty step up to the plate, as Ann Cooper used to say, but really, people that had never taught online got on Zoom, did, live online, and I'm just so in awe of them. I've been around computers forever. I've been teaching here since 1984. I was a student assistant in the computer science department. But I, th what I saw gen ed faculty do was just amazing, and I just want to thank them for that. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Are there any other members of the public that would like to provide public comment? If not, the public hearing portion of the meeting is concluded. Uh, now we'll move on to review and approval of minutes. Is there a motion to approve the minutes of the September meeting? Has everybody had a chance so moved, to? Mr. Chair. Yes, Trustee Gibbons. He was moving, and I'll second his motion. Oh, thank you, <laughs> Trustee Gibbons and Trustee Cole. Uh, do I have, you, you yeah. seconded, okay, very good. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Moving on to the monthly reports. Uh, do you have a report, Ms. Gardner? Good morning, I do not have a report today. Very good. Um, moving on to the strategic focus. Um, our first, uh, we, we're going to talk this morning or have a presentation about St. Petersburg College Athletics. Dr. Jamel Connor uh, and Mr. Davy Gill have a presentation for us. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, Chair Kidwell, members of the board, and Dr. Williams. Good morning. My name is Jamel Connor, and I'm the Vice President of Student Affairs. Today, we'll be presenting to you an update on athletics and our athletic programs at SPC. I'd like to both introduce and recognize our athletic director, Mr. Davey Gill. Davey has been the AD at SPC since 2015. During COVID, he was inducted into the 2019-20 Florida College System Activities Association Hall of Fame. Awardees are selected by their peers on the merits of their community college contributions and achievements. Davey has served over 20 years in higher education, including as a retention specialist, academic advisor, and coordinator for our original Brother to Brother program. As our AD, he currently also serves as conference chair for the Suncoast Conference. Congratulations, Davey. Chair Kidwell, Board of Trustees, Madam President, 
Um, thank you all for expressing an interest in hearing more about what we are doing within the athletic department here at St. Petersburg College. And Dr. Connor, thank you for those and kind words in that introduction. So um, following the shutdown in 2020, uh, the spring of 2020 of all athletic programs uh, worldwide, um, our program took a very proactive approach in developing um, protocols that were specific to each of the teams um, that we have and that were, oops, sorry about that. Um, that were specific to the teams that we have, but also that were constantly in line with the changing CDC guidelines, um, with the college's phase return plan, as well as all the, the local and state guidelines that were also given. So our coaching staff held different leadership positions throughout the state and was very involved in creating um, those protocols uh, statewide. The NJCAA at the end of the summer of 2020 announced that all the upcoming seasons would be pushed back to the spring, um, which gave us the fall to kind of work through our plans and try to figure out when and if we were going to return back to plan. Um, during that time, we were able to not only kind of tighten up a lot of the things that we were doing within athletics, but we also were able to enhance our live streaming capabilities because we knew that whenever we did come back, um, whether or not uh, we were going to have the public in to be able to, to watch the games with us was going to be a challenge. So during that time, we, able, we were able to get our live streaming capabilities up to where we were able to stream all of our games last year, our home games last year, with the exception of one baseball game that had to be rescheduled because of, because of the weather. So the NJCA also fell in line with the other um, uh, athletic associations and granted what we refer to as COVID years uh, to student athletes. This basically um, meant that any student athlete that was involved in a season that was affected by COVID, whether it was the spring of 2020 or with the announcements that we were going to have abbreviated seasons that following year, any student that was involved in that was going to be granted a COVID year and that year would not count against their eligibility. What that did was allowed us to have success stories like the young lady you see there, Alexis Thrasher. Um, she was a softball player for St. Pete College in 2017-18. Uh, she came, played, had a really successful year, returned for that next year and had an ACL injury that ended her season. She was able to get a medical hardship from the NJCAA and come back in 1920. Well, in 1920, the season was ended because of COVID. Um, so that year was not counted against her and she was able to return last year. Last year, she was able to play on our team that uh, qualified for the state tournament and she was able to get her uh, bachelor's degree in education from SBC, which was a first for us. So we're really proud about that. And that was one of the good things that came out of COVID because obviously there was so much bad. Taking a look back at our athletic department, SBC has six teams. We have men's and women's basketball, baseball, softball, tennis, and volleyball. Um, the chart there on your left, on my left, uh, is showing how those players are break down, how those 87 players last year were broken down. It also shows you the locations uh, where we play at throughout the county and also shows the different divisions that we participate in with all of our teams participating at the Division I level with the exception of, of volleyball. Um, of those 87 student athletes we had, the chart on the right there shows the diversity within athletics. Um, there's a lot of information that we could have put up here within the essence of time we didn't. Uh, we have international student athletes that come from everywhere from France to um, the Ukraine. And we're also proud that we have 33 student athletes that are from right here in Pinellas County. Um, we had a really successful year. The one thing that St. Pete College is known for is not just for having one successful athletic pro, um, team. All of our teams are successful. Four of our six teams last year made it to postseason play. Um, our women's basketball team won the inaugural conference for the Central Conference in basketball. Coach Davison, our women's basketball coach, was named Coach of the Year for the conference. The young lady that you see in the photo there, Dome, we call her Zamora. Um, she was named the Female Scholar Athlete of the Year for the state and graduated from SBC with a 3.9 and is now over at Florida Southern um, playing basketball. The gentleman you see in the, the bottom there, Gabe Rincones, was a baseball player for two years here at SBC, played for Coach Beckman. Um, Gabe was the player of the year in the state. He would have won that twice had not the first year being interrupted by COVID. Um, Gabe was drafted this summer to San Diego Padres, but he has chosen to uh, resume his career in college and is going down to FAU to play to finish his baseball and college career. 
Um, our tennis team uh, finished second in the state. Um, it won state championships at number one singles, number two singles, as well as number one doubles. Um, went out to the national tournament and finished fourth. And this year, they're already off to a great, st a great start, one of the top teams in the country, for sure. So um, very happy about the things that we are doing there. Even more so, what we're happy about is the work that our student athletes are doing inside the classroom. Um, as you can see here, over the last three years, our GPA has been trending up. Um, and last year, we finished off the year with a cumulative uh, program-wide GPA of a 3.06. And we were really happy to share that our, um, we had four teams that were a cumulative GPA above a 3.1 GPA. So that was we were really excited about that with all the challenges with COVID. And that was led by our volleyball team that had a 3.6 team GPA with the 14 players that we had. So if you look at our transfer rate, you see there was a little dip last year. Um, that was expected because with the COVID years that were granted by the, the, the college organizations and associations, um, some of our students have chose to stay here and play that extra year instead of graduating and moving on to that next level because there's a kind of a, a backlog with college athletes and where students have an opportunity to go. So they're staying here. Um, we have four students that are in the bachelor's program. Again, um, that was started during COVID times and that's something that we're, we are definitely excited about. You can also see the overall success rates and how they compare with the college-wide success rates. Something that we are really, again, proud about and happy to share is that chart in the middle about the work that Coach Beckman and Coach Crumley have been doing with our African-American males at St. Pete College. Uh, we know that that's a focus of the college. I'm part of the, the African-American male committee with Dr. Smiley and Dr. Strickland, and we know that that's a focus. And as you can see here, the African-American males in the athletic department at SBC have an average GPA of 2.95 compared to that 2.5 of the overall. So that is something that we are definitely happy to share. Outside of the classroom, we continue to have a intense focus on our partnership both internal and external and keep trying to make sure that we enhance our our community service <coughs> opportunities obviously with COVID that's taken a little bit of a, a different look but our coaches continue to be creative and finding ways that we can be involved um, some of the things that we've been involved in the past you see the photos of some of our softball players being involved in bell ringing for the city of clear I mean for uh, uh, the Salvation and Army as well as different Habitat for Humanity projects our basketball teams stay involved in and not only just basketball related activities, but community service activities that engage the children through sports, uh, working with the police athletic leagues. Our baseball and softball teams have also participated in the Clearwater Challenger Jamboree, which was an event for special needs adults and children. It's a baseball tournament that they go out and they serve as umpires and coaches for. And it's something that our kids really get a uh, good sense of belonging for participating in. Um, we also are excited to talk about events um, that celebrate the purpose of college sports, which is the assisted institution and recruitment and retention of the students that they serve. And uh, we are very happy to this weekend as a kind of a shameless plug at 10 o'clock Saturday morning, we're going to be having an event that we have worked with uh, Dr. Shannon Ulrich and Dr. Amber Esselin, Dewan Fox, who serves as a compliance coordinator for athletics. And we're doing an event for our first time in college students. That it's going to be a first to finish event. This is our last home volleyball game of the year where we'll be celebrating our sophomores that are going to be moving on to the next step. And we're inviting the first time in college students out so that they can kind of get engaged in that college experience. Because again, we know that students that are engaged outside of the classroom are more successful. So we are excited about working with them and to get that, those kind of things um, done that we're looking to do throughout the year. Um, another thing that we're happy to get back to is our, our faculty and staff appreciation game at the baseball field in the spring. There's no partnerships that we have that are more important than the faculty and staff at St. Pete College. So anything that we can do to engage them and the show appreciation we are trying to get into. So uh, Chair Kilwell, we heard about your baseball career and we would be absolutely honored if you would come out and join us for that game throughout the first two watch. All right. <laughs> we got a lot of living up to do. Dr. Connor did it before and she threw it. She threw a strike, so it was a little high, but it works. So we are definitely excited about doing those things. So um, 
moving forward, we obviously have to continue to be flexible with all things COVID. Um, we're obviously um, in a position where we're going to have crowds back into our indoor game, so we're excited about that. But we're also going to continue to have our um, our live streaming for those folks that either can't or don't want to come back into those type of environments. So we're really excited about the work that we have going with that. Our schedule, like I said, is built to have makeup days, and we are encouraging vaccinations um, throughout the students uh, in our athletic department. So we continue to do that. Um, we're also trying to do some monetary things with our streaming because we're getting a lot of uh, traction with that. So we're going to try to expand our foundation efforts. We've worked with Jesse Turtle in the foundation and recently we've been able to secure funds that have a textbook lending program for our athletes that are here on scholarship. So we're constantly looking at different things that we can do. I know Dr. Davis in the past has had our uh, women's basketball team up doing the Valspar tournament parking cars. The money we've made from that was enough money for us to cover housing for a couple of our female basketball players. So those those things are important to us and every little bit counts. Um, another big change is uh, the name, image, and likeness legislation that was recently passed. Um, they gave col uh, college athletes the opportunity to earn money off of their aim, name, image, and likeness, which is a difference um, in amateur status for college sports. So we were able to get with uh, the college's compliance uh, coordinator, Mr. Uh, Tom, as well as Ms. Gardner, and develop a policy and procedure for our student athletes. So moving into the future, we feel pretty comfortable at where we are with that. So just some real quick noteworthy accomplishments of our recent athletics. The fo photo you see on the top, the guy in the Yankees uniform, that's Trey Ambergy. Trey played in 2015 for Coach Beckman, uh, one of the 20 players to get drafted directly out of SBC and go to professional baseball. This summer, July 15th, he was called up by the New York Yankees to play for the big club, a game that unfortunately was pushed back because of uh, a COVID outbreak within the Yankees organization. It was pushed back one day and Coach Beckman had a chance to go up to New York City and be with him um, during that. So that was a good time. Below him, Jason Brunel. Jason was a part of this, the state championship in 2017 that we were able to get. Um, he graduated from SBC, transferred to Jacksonville State, where he earned his, um, his bachelor's degree in psychology. This past summer, you can see him on ESPN. He was playing with the Denver Nuggets summer league team. So he has a very bright future ahead of him. Um, lastly, Andresa Paris, she came to SPC, she's a 6'3 middle block, blocker from Santa Catrina, Brazil, um, graduated from SPC in two years with a 4.0, uh, transferred, went to uh, Baylor University, one of the top volleyball programs in the country, and um, she will be graduating at the end of this year, with double majoring in uh, business management and supply chain management as well. So. Uh, you can also see some of the uh, notable alumni athletes where they've attended, as well as some of our players that are currently playing in different professional organizations in the MLB. Um, last but certainly not, need, not least, um, none of these things that I have been able to share with you today um, would have remotely been possible without the people that you see on this screen and some of the ones that are here with me today. So obviously under great leadership from Dr. Williams and Dr. Connor, um, our coaching staff is absolutely phenomenal and they are the reason that we are able to do the things that we are able to do. Uh, we have a couple that could not be with us today. Coach Tamika Green, who is our cheerleading coach. Um, we didn't talk about cheerleading much today because we had to put them on a little bit of a break because of all the things that were going on with COVID. Um, and also Coach Denisha Davison, who couldn't be here. Our head women's basketball coach, who we're really excited about their year this year and what they have going on. Um, it's be a really successful year. And also Coach Crumley, who was inducted into the Florida College System Hall of Fame in 2014 and is creeping up on 500 wins. He's teaching classes right now, so he couldn't be with us uh, today either. But here with us today, we have uh, Coach Phil Girardi. Coach Phil is uh, our tennis coach, and he has been, since the very day one, he has been our coach for tennis, and he has developed our tennis program into a national powerhouse. Uh, we're already looking at what the national tournament is going to look like this year, because without a doubt, we, we know they will be there. Um, so this year, he also was named the ITA Coach of the Year, and they're flying him out to Vegas in December to get his award. So I'm sure that'd be a fun time. So. <laughs> <clears throat> Also, we have Coach Scott White. Um, coach White has been the um, volleyball coach here at SBC um, since 2011. And Coach White, the one thing, if you notice when we talk about the presentation today, that volleyball GPA at a 3.6, that's one of the things he's known for. Every year, our volleyball team is right there in the runnings for um, academic uh, team of the year. And that's because of his focus on academics as well as developing the young ladies into stellar volleyball players. So um, next, we have... <laughs> 
Next, we have Coach Brianna Myers. Coach Bree is our head softball coach here. Um, she played at SBC, graduated in 2004, had a successful career at Delta State, um, where she also played. She came back in 2007 and became the SBC softball coach. And she plays in one of the toughest divisions in the landscape of college athletics, the Suncoast Conference for softball. So in every year, she's making her run at conference championships and state titles. So really appreciate the work that she's done with our ladies. And again, excited about what they have this year. Last but oh, I'm going fast because I know I'm running on time. So last but certainly not least is Coach Ryan Beckman. Um, coach Beckman, um, in 2010-11, he became our head baseball coach. And the only thing that I can say about Coach Beckman is pride and tradition. He has developed our program into an absolutely phenomenal program that everyone can be proud of. The young men that he's developed not only come and be uh, successful men in the community, but a lot of them transfer to big institutions and in the ranks of pro ball all over the place. So just wanted to say thank them because without you guys, there is no success in what it is that we're doing. And um, with that, our website is here. Uh, you need anything? Any questions that anybody has? I have a couple comments. I could probably talk for an hour on this, but <clears throat> that was, I mean, that was great. Um, uh, I attended St. Pete College basketball camp in 1989 as a 12-year-old, so I go way back here. Um, my business partner, Matt Kilgrove, played basketball here uh, in the 80s as well. Uh, the one thing I want to say, and, and I guess uh, I don't know as a college athlete <clears throat> how I would have reacted during COVID if I was told that I wasn't allowed to have a season. Um, <clears throat> I've often said that it would not have been, uh, I probably wouldn't have been very mature about it. Um, and so to see not only the student athletes persevering through that, but also with the impressive GPAs and the impressive community service, that was, you know, that was very eye-opening. Uh, so congratulations to you, congratulations to the coaches, uh, your staff, all the student athletes. Um, it's not easy to have a full-time job as a student athlete while attaining you know high academic achievement as well so uh, i'm very aware of that and thank you for your presentation the only quick question i have is do we have any student athletes that have name image likeness uh Yes. Income? <laughs> yes. Oh, well, not necessarily income, or, but they're getting perks right now. Our athletes have been reached out, um, some of our international kids, by international recruiting agencies to kind of headhunt places for students to go to school at. Um, we've had baseball players being reached out from everything from Barts School Sports to social media platforms. And they usually, the, right now, it's not necessarily be money. Exactly. <laughs> it's, and that's the one thing we had that policy for is because we have to be mindful of that. And um, they're not getting money right now. They're getting gifts and goods, something that was taboo before. For, so I just wondered because that's changing it is any other comments or questions I just have a quick comment I and again thank you all for being here it means a lot and your work um, within our institution um, means so much to us I also appreciate how much we try to connect with the community through athletics here and I, I Really want to encourage you all to keep on with that. I think it's important that our student athletes are part of this community and there's a tie in there. And it goes to what we are as more than just a, um, a college or a place to learn, um, but we're also a group that's part of the fabric of Pinellas County. And so I thank you for the time spent on that and for all the projects I've continued to see. I've shown up at um, community events and I was working side by side with the women's basketball team. I didn't even know they were gonna be there. Um, that was at Police Athletic League back in the day, yep. Tommy, which I know you were part of too. Yep. So it's, it's great to see and, and I love that the effort is being put forward in that regard. And I just uh, have one request going forward can the Board of Trustees be sent a uh, schedule of all home games for every sport so that it's front and center in our minds uh, so that if, if we're uh, going to go look for information, we're going to forget and get on some other task and forget about it. But if I have the schedule in yep. front of me, I'd love to be able to participate more in what's going on out there. Without a doubt. Awesome. And if it's on my calendar, I can make it. Definitely. We'll make sure we do that. Uh, Trustee Gibbons, I think, <clears throat> do you have a comment? 
I do, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Davey. Uh, great presentation. I do have a few questions. Mm -hmm. um, on the scholarships, are we and recruitment? I over the, and, and I. I think Nathan's comment. Um, was great because it is it's true. I see our student athletes all around the community doing all kinds of things. On the scholarship and recruitment, I know you said that we have people, some of our students doing fundraisers and, and other things. I happen to have been a, a college athlete and I don't know how they find the time to do that. I would like to see us do more centered around um, getting involved in the community and having uh, corporations sponsor us to make sure that we have scholarships and these young people don't have to park cars um, uh, because they're already running a full schedule. The other day, I gave a young lady a ride um, that was walking from the apartment complex that the student, not the girls work, that live in, the student athletes live in. Um, and that's a long walk. So, you know, to do all those things, they keep good grades, play a, a sport, be required to, to, to have study hall and all these other things, it's a very difficult task and it's a lot. So I'd like to see us as a college work harder uh, to get corporations more involved with giving so that we can help with scholarships and recruitment. And yep. then uh, the second, that's just my comment. The second part of it is, can we start charging for events? Um, uh, Davey, you may not know, but I'm on another board, uh, university board, and we have Reggie Theus now as our, as our um, uh, athletic director. Mm -hmm. And the first thing he came in, he said, look, you guys don't even charge for the events. So, you know, we need to start figuring out how we can gain more revenue to help our young people. And then my third question, um, I guess, is, I saw that we are grad, we are grad, um, transferring students, but are, how many of them are graduating? Is that number consistent with graduating? I know that we're transferring them to other schools, but do they graduate before they leave SPC? Yes, they do. And, uh, oh, sorry. Okay. And, and then finally, um, uh, I know that at one point we had problems with athletic trainers. Have we fixed that issue where, uh, because a parent called me about one uh, team did not have an athlete, a full-time athletic trainer, and um, and they were really concerned for it. So, do we have we do we have an athletic trainer for every sport? Uh, yes, we have one full-time athletic trainer that we partner with OPPT, a corporate sponsor, um, to provide that 40 hours a week um, during the 40 weeks that we have that we are in season. So we do um, have an athletic trainer, but she operates for all of our sports, and that's able to happen because of the different times of the year that they they go. Okay, and as far as the as far as um, working with the community, I'll, I'll I'll be more than happy to step up and help you with some corporate partner getting with cor corporate folks. I know that most everybody on the board knows somebody that has been a corporate partner before, um, but you know, getting with the chamber of commerce and other folks, we, we really need to try to do that. So we, I, I really I know the burden of being a college athlete as Tommy does. And it's very difficult already. And to have to go out and try to raise money as a student athlete, it, I, I, I couldn't have done that. I'm just telling you, I would have flunked. I would have, passed, I would have failed school. Definitely. Final thing, congratulations on your Hall of Fame induction. Thank you. I appreciate That's that. That's fantastic. Thank you. <laughs> Next presentation we have is Dr. Matthew Leo Troth and Ms. Rita Farlow on the economic value of St. Petersburg College. Thank you, Chair Kidwell, uh, trustees, President Williams. Um, I'm very pleased uh, to be joined uh, by Rita Farlow, Executive Director of Marketing and Strategic Communication for this presentation. As I think you all know, I'm Matthew Leo Troth, Vice President for Academic Affairs. Uh, St. Petersburg College contracted with MC, a national organization that does economic impacts for colleges and universities around the country. This is really important because it helps us tell our story in terms of how we really have a huge impact on society and gives us some numbers to show how we compare uh, with other schools within the state, across uh, the country, uh, within our system, and around the world. 
MC is the national hallmark for doing this type of analysis. They use federal data, so it allows us to compare, uh, make some comparisons uh, with schools outside of state as well as inside the state. MC has been doing this for more than 20 years, more than 2,000 uh, colleges and universities, really is the gold standard for doing this type of analysis of the economic impact and investment of higher education in the United States. When we're looking at our uh, economic analysis for the college, we're looking at two different things. One of them is the economic impact, and the other one is the investment. The economic impact is an annual dollar figure of how our college contributes to society. The investment analysis is the long-term impact year over year of us as a member of our community and our, um, and our college's uh, impact on our students' individual educational attainment. When looking at Pinellas County, there's more than 600,000 jobs in Pinellas County. The economy of Pinellas County in total is more than $50 billion impact. Looking at educational attainment, educational attainment does lead to different levels of individual income. When looking at the average across different educational attainment levels, baccalaureate does lead associate, does lead uh, certificate, although we know from our own graduates that we have some certificates that pull students far ahead of, uh, of some other degrees. And so we're always mindful of the individual certificates and degrees that we offer. We had MC look at our uh, data for two different years. We looked at 2019 and 2020, and then we looked at 2020 and 2021. 2020, 2021 was impacted heavily by the pandemic, so we're looking at what went on during the pandemic for our own internal analysis of what's going on in the college. But I wanted to present to you our impact in 2019 and 2020, because that's gonna be much more similar as kind of a normal year of the impact of the college. In 2019, 2020, we had just shy of 38,000 unique individuals taking a class for credit at St. Petersburg College. Credit towards a certificate, credit towards a degree, credit towards personal attainment. We also had more than 4,000 unique individuals doing non-credit education. So a certificate, professional development, workforce education, corporate college, some other educational aspect of what we provide. In that year, we had more than 3,000 unique employees. Our total payroll was more than $130 million. Our total tuition revenue was just shy of $40 million. And one of the things that we sometimes don't think about is almost a third of our students came from outside of Pinellas County. This could be from online students, or this could be from students from Pasco or Hillsboro, Sarasota, Manatee counties, who are coming in because of our unique programs or the high caliber of our programs. And inward migration always helps the economy of a region. And so having that, that additional impact on our county really adds to the value of the economy, the quality of life for everyone in our county. Big top, uh, top of the line uh, impacts. Our total in, uh, impact financial on an annual basis is more than a billion dollars in Pinellas County. Think about that. Our college, more than a billion dollar impact in our county. We are one out of, one out of uh, every $50 in this county is directly tied to what we do at St. Petersburg College. And not only from our own employees, but from the dollars that we generate in this community, we create 17,000 jobs in our county just because of what we do on an annual basis. Long-term impact, a dollar spent by a student towards tuition is paid back almost fourfold in terms of the economic benefit to the individual. It's almost a three-time impact for the taxpayer, but it's overall more than an eight-time impact for the community in general, between student tuition dollars, between tax income, and between other in, uh, interactions we have with private entities, with the public, in terms of our impact in our county. Breaking these down a little bit more, that $1.2 billion is looking at our operating, total operating dollars of uh, more than $160 million. Our student spending impact, because of how students spend dollars, because of what they're doing as students, more than $50 million. And then our alumni, graduates of St. Petersburg College, almost a billion dollars in this county. We think again about that impact. 
breaking this down by different industries, we touch all industries. Biggest industry is retail, number one, healthcare, number two, real estate, number three, and then professional and technical expertise, number four. You know, people are expecting to see hospitality. Hospitality ends up getting broken out across some of these. So you have hospitality retail, you have hospitality um, real estate, you have hospitality professional services. So it, that particular industry gets broken out slightly differently in this analysis. But again, when we're looking at how that $1.2 billion economic impact is broken out, we really do touch all industries in this county. Another way of looking at what we do is one out of every 36 jobs in our county is because of us. When we look at the long-term investment dollars, from that student perspective, that 3.7 re, uh, return on investment, you know, it's an eight, or I'm sorry, it's an 18% return on investment. Multiplying that, uh, that individual uh, tuition dollar in how it impacts what uh, the total income of the student. From the taxpayer perspective, the actual annual rate of return is almost 10%. From society, it's a little hard to calculate just because you don't have the unique uh, individual contribution to this. But another way of thinking about this is we are a better investment than investing in Wall Street. What we do has a better and higher impact than the average rate of return on most portfolios on, um, in, on the Dow Jones, on the NASDAQ. We're a great investment. That's a quick summary of the information that we've got from MC. I'm now going to turn it over to Rita Farlow, who's going to talk about what we're going to use that information for as we talk with our community. Thank you, Matthew. Good morning. Good morning. Hello. So the beauty of this data is that it really helps us to tell our story, right? The numbers help us illustrate the impact SPC has on our community, and this is everything from providing our students and alumni with pathways to economic prosperity to lifting our community as a whole. When Matthew talked about the 8.4% ROI for the community, you know, that shines through an increased health, safety, and well-being of our, of our community that comes along with an ed educated citizenry. It also helps us show how we're retaining talent in our area and we're providing businesses with that skilled pipeline of talented workers who help fuel our accounting, uh, economy. So we are sharing the information in a phased approach. Phase one has already begun. Over the past several weeks, we uh, in marketing and strategic communications have been working on the creation and deployment of various print and digital assets. Um, You'll see an example here of our newly redesigned SPC magazine, which should be hitting your mailboxes soon. We're very excited about this. Um, but this is a great vehicle that we're able to reach um, many areas, many different types of stakeholders. Um, we've also created various print ads and digital ads for local newspapers and print collateral um, for our policymakers, our uh, local legislative de delegation, and also our workforce partners like our advisory committee members. You'll also notice that the data is included in your annual report from 2021, which you should have in your packet this morning. So phase two begins today. Um, right at the conclusion of this meeting, we are prepared to send out our press release that will go to more than 100 local, state, and national journalists, as well as our higher education partners at the Florida Department of Ed, the Florida College System, AFC, and other higher ed partners. Our social media campaign will also begin today. So I'd like to ask all of you on the board, as well as all those in the audience or watching um, via live stream, to please help us out by spreading the word, sharing, liking, and engaging our posts. Um, you are our greatest asset in helping us with the storytelling. So phase three will be the deeper dive, and that's what we're gonna be working on throughout this coming year. That's about integrating this data and really um, using the voices of our students, our alumni, our partners to help us tell the stories through testimonials, um, print, video, and we're just gonna be integrating the information in our periodicals and our publications um, to help us share and promote this narrative, which is that our community is stronger, for having St. Petersburg College in it. So that is the um, marketing and promotion campaign that we'll be working on. Any questions for Matthew or I? 
just a comment. Um, this is the type of information that I take out personally in the community. I think the board takes out in the community where we're sort of playing cheerleader for St. Pete College. Um, this is the type of information that I kind of brag about when I'm talking about the college at work or wherever I am, and those are amazing numbers. I, I, I didn't know, I knew the impact was high. I know most of our graduates stay here locally, um, but that's a huge impact. In fact, I, I know we have lunch tomorrow, but I would like to have this um, presentation uh, handy for me so I have exact numbers and I'm not saying stuff like we're the greatest and we have a lot of benefit <laughs> to the community so yeah, um, it's just Chair. it's just better to know yeah. trustee Mr. Gibbons Chair? yep this was an excellent report I would also like a copy of this report and the economic analysis that goes along with the 1.2 billion dollars Dr. Eliya Shroff, and um, the name escapes me of the young lady because I'm on Zoom that just helped with the presentation and doing the marketing. You guys should be commended. And Dr. Williams, let me say this. I've been on this board a very, very, very long time. This is the single best report that has ever been given at this, at this college. Wow. And the reason is that this particular report gives us actually numbers that quantify with what we bring to the county every year and we are able to back it up with data to show people the economic impact that this college has on the entire region and, and county. When we're speaking to people now, we can speak with confidence of what we bring to the table, mm -hmm. why we are necessary, and what we're getting accomplished. So Dr. Williams, you and your team, um, that put this together should be commended. I, I honestly will tell you this is the best report that I've ever had. This is right down the alley of when I keep saying we have to think about being run, not operating totally like a business because we have a different, our product is different than widgets. It's, it's people, lives, and opportunities. Mm -hmm. And um, you have definitely shown us that we, we're doing that. And now we have something to utilize to be able to tell people exactly what we do and what we are doing um, in, in, in and around the area. So thank you. Thank you so much, Trustee Gibbons. I think the thing about this report is it shows us the question that Jesse, um, Jesse Turtle asked me, what will happen if SPC is not here? And that was a question that he came up with, well, what's gonna happen if we go away? A lot will happen if we're not here because of the impact we made and make. And I think that uh, my team has done a fantastic job in um, getting this work done and answering those questions to move forward. Thank you, Trustee Gibbons and Chair Kidwell um, for your comments. And we're ready, Rita, to um, like and forward your post and things of that nature to get this out. And I'm really um, proud of marketing and the work that they're doing. We're getting some help um, very soon to keep things moving. And um, it's really a big deal the, to, to get this out there. And so excellent job. Thank you. <clears throat> it's almost sad to have to move along here. Um, <laughs> Uh, the consent agenda will be taken up in one vote. Uh, if everybody has had a chance to look it over, uh, do we have a motion to approve the consent agenda? So moved. Do we have a second? Second. Uh, uh, Chair uh, Kidwell, I just have one question uh, before we take this. Um, in relation to the baccalaureate approval process of the two new programs, uh, mm -hmm. Dr. Williams, is there anyone here who can answer a question, question regarding sure. that? Dr. Leon oh, Right back up to the microphone. Yep. <laughs> Here we go. Yes. Uh, I just, uh, I, I'm excited that we're moving forward with these two programs. I guess I just wanted to get a little more clarity for when I'm asked, um, whenever that may be, um, why, why we feel the need right now to step in and offer this in our community. Um, I know it shows USF, University of Tampa offer similar programs, but they're not maybe, um, they don't have as many students as they could based on the demand from what I read in the packet. Um, is this something where we can clearly come in and help um, um, fill the gap? 
yes, yes, sir. Uh, th this conversation started last year as USF was looking at uh, the long-term strategic plans for their um, College of Education, and we were looking at what are the needs of our community and how we can complement what they are doing. Uh, we have had several conversations with USF about this. Uh, essentially, the need and demand far outstrips any uh, provision they can make for graduates in this area, even if they were fully enrolled uh, in this area. And so it really is a, a continuing need across all the different school districts in our region. Uh, we, ha we have talked with uh, USF both out of Tampa, but also locally on um, some areas of specialization, and you know we have started to step away from some areas, uh, and they're enhancing other areas. And so we are again complementing well with what USF is doing in the baccalaureate and education areas. Perfect. Thank you. That's all I needed to hear. Very good. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Passes. Uh, we have informational reports uh, available for your review. Mm -hmm. I don't know that we have any presentations there. No. no? Um, we have no, there are no proposed changes to the board manual, rules manual. Uh, next on the agenda is the president's report. Thank you um, so much. We are right in the middle of getting things prepared for our work in Tallahassee, and, and so each week my team realizes I'm not here because I'm there. Um, and so we had an opportunity for me to present at the Senate um, two weeks ago. No, actually that was last week. Um, and had a chance to speak to the Senate along with four other of the 28 um, state college presidents about what we're doing in workforce, dev ed, um, and how we're accelerating student success. And so I had that opportunity. We have some follow-up um, meetings where some of the um, senators want to come visit SPC. So we're getting ready to host um, them here at the um, college. And tomorrow I have a chance to speak with Speaker Sprouls. Um, and this week we're full of meetings, um, getting ready to advocate for the college and moving us forward. I want to thank all the Board of Trustee members. You all have been there with me through this whole thing and helping me get meetings. Um, and helping me make those connections. Um, as the COP, the Council of Presidents um, Policy and Advocacy Chair, it's been really fortunate for us to have a chance to get to meet all of the incoming um, leaders in Tallahassee as well to help position SPC in the right spot. So we'll keep you posted as we go, but I'll be in Tallahassee as soon as this meeting's over. I'm headed um, back to Tallahassee. That is pretty much my report at this point. All right, moving along. Uh, next meeting date is November 16th, 2020, up in Trustee Butts area of the county on the Tarpon Springs campus. Um, that's all I have. This meeting is adjourned. Now you hit it again. Yep. Now we will open the St. Petersburg Collegiate High School Governing Board Meeting uh, with Starla Metz. Good morning, Chair Kidwell, members of the board, and Dr. Williams. I'm Starla Metz, the Associate Vice President of Collegiate High Schools. Joining me this morning are our two outstanding principals at the St. Petersburg Collegiate High School St. Petersburg Gibbs campus, Raquel Giles, and at the St. Petersburg Collegiate High School North Pinellas Tarpon Springs campus, Dr. Ian Call. Thank you so much for the opportunity to bring forth several items that are required by the state or the district on the consent agenda. There's one item in particular I would like to bring to your attention, and that's the amended budget for St. Petersburg Collegiate High School North Pinellas. Last year, Governor DeSantis, through his emergency order, suspended school grades for K-12, but there was an opportunity for schools to opt in for a grade, and we chose to opt in for a grade for both of the collegiate high schools. I'm delighted to inform you that both schools are now designated as A schools, and the first opportunity for St. Petersburg Collegiate High School, North Pinellas, to earn a grade. So we're really proud of them.
As an A school, St. Petersburg Collegiate High School North Pinellas also qualified for capital outlay funding in the amount of approximately $118,000, and that's why we're bringing forth an amended budget. There are no other changes to the budget other than the additional revenue. Do you have any questions for me on any of these items? I do not. Then may I respectfully request approval? Do so moved. Have, do we have a second? Any, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Passes. Thank Motion you. Motion passes. And now it's my pleasure to introduce Raquel Johnson. <coughs> Good morning, Chair Kidwell, members of the board, and Dr. Williams. I'm honored to be here with you this morning to bring a few highlights from our campus. First, I'd like to recognize Cade Finney. Cade is being honored as a National Merit Semifinalist. He is an outstanding senior and currently serves as president of our National Honor Society. And Cade has plans to attend the United States Naval Academy. Two other students were recognized by College Board as commended scholars, Sydney Barker and Ruben Chin. Sydney is the president of our Interact Club and Ruben is the treasurer of our National Honor Society and coordinates NHS tutoring for all of our students on campus. I'd also like to recognize Azalee Nelson. She was honored by College Board National African American Recognition Program. This program recognizes students from underrepresented communities who score in the top 10% by the state and have a 3.5 GPA. As Mrs. Matt stated, we've been designated as a school by the state of Florida and we are so proud of this because our team worked really hard to layer in tiered systems of support so our students could finish strong during COVID. We also received the 2021 College Success Award from Great Schools. This distinction is given to high schools that have won at least two College Success Awards. The gold recipients have a multi-year track record of student success. We've had an awesome game and movie night and we partnered with the SPC Food Pantry to make a substantial donation of canned goods and other non-perishable items. And lastly, we'd like to recognize Jessica Catterton for being the 2021 Anne Frank Humanitarian Award. Jessica is an outstanding student by every standard and she's currently the president of our SGA. Great things are happening on our campus. We'd love to have you stop by to visit with us. We are in the midst of planning our fall dance scheduled for next Friday. Thank you. <laughs> Great. Good morning, Chair Kidwell, board members, Dr. Williams. I'm very excited to be here to share with you some highlights from this current school year. First, I'm extremely proud that for the first time, SPCHS on the Tarpa Springs campus has received recognition as an A school. So we're very excited about that. All of our, <laughs> all of our students, especially our sophomores and juniors, did amazing jobs on their Florida assessments. And all of our students, including the seniors, did great work in their college classes, which allowed us to earn that A. So we're very proud of them. Very proud of Kai Rubach. He's a student on the right there. He's our, our National Merit semifinalist. Kai's been with us since the beginning, very part of our first sophomore class for three years. He's been on our PTSA board, and he's currently the president of our science club. And so he's really, really great student. He's really grateful to be part of the SPC community and everything that SPC has done for him to help him achieve this award. We were, this year, we were able to have our very first interact pinning ceremony. Our first one was pushed off because, postponed because of the COVID pandemic. So we had our first one this year. So we're very grateful to be able to not only have our students back in the classroom, but to be able to, be able to do these sorts of events for them so they can be recognized for their hard work and for their work in the community. We're also very excited because several leaders in the community of the Rotary Club were able to come and join us and speak to our students and say how proud they were of the students and the great work that they're doing in the community. Part of the work that they've done in the community through the Rotary Club was to volunteer at the Tarpon Springs Triathlon. 
And so our students set up, help set up that the day before. And if you can look at that picture, that's how early they were, because that's daybreak, and those students were there getting ready, helping set up for that, the, that event. So we're very proud of them to take, for taking part in that. We've also been able to do fun events for our students. As you can see there, we had a game and movie night. Um, we call it game and movie night, but the biggest hit is actually karaoke at the um, game and movie night. And those are students singing there. And so everybody had a great time. And this Friday, we'll be having our fall dance. So we're very excited to get back to having those events for our students. Thank you. Any questions? You guys do great work. <clears throat> Fantastic. Thank you so much. We really appreciate your support. Absolutely. Thank you. And we brought a yearbook to share. I am so proud of the yearbook. Um, they sent me one to my office, and we went through it just to see what their life was like during COVID, um, what the students were doing, the creativity, um, the smiles. I think you'll really like seeing the students um, in action in a book. <laughs> it, was, it was really good. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. This meeting is adjourned.